Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube space. So today I am doing a fun collab with a very close friend of mine who works at Gojek. So if you guys do not know what Gojek is, it is one of the most booming startups in Southeast Asia. So it is an on-demand services based platform. It does transportation, food and payments. So you're thinking of like Uber, Dunzo, Zomato, everything together. They have their services up and running in Thailand and Indonesia and Singapore right now and as for this person so she is one of the most brilliant developers that I've met in my college I mean we went to VIT Velour and we graduated the batch of 2019 so within even like one week of placements she had like two job offers from Deloitte and Barclays and then she worked at a couple more places and she joined Gojek in January so she has had like eight months of experience now and yeah, I mean, today let's talk to her, understand what she does as a product engineer in Gojek, what the job is like, wh how, what is her background, how much coding she has done in her past and yeah, about the culture, about the startup culture altogether. So yeah. Okay. Hi, Akanshi. How is it going? Hi, I'm good. Everything's fine. How are you? Good, good, good. So for someone who does not know what is Gojek, so this would be my introduction. And if, if I'm missing out on something, then you could maybe add on that. Okay, so let, to start with, it does everything. It's an on-demand services platform for food, transportation, payments. And I think in 2016, it gained some buzzword because it was the first unicorn of Indonesia. I think presently, it's like it's become one of the most, you know, uh, thriving startups in Southeast Asia. I think it's valued at nine billion dollars because it essentially does everything in Indian terms. It does like Danzo, Uber, Zomato, everything. So yeah, so I think that that's a good way to define Gojek. So do you? I mean, if you would like to add something to that, um, I think you pretty much covered the gist of it. But to add a couple more things, uh, like currently we have around twenty plus products incorporated into a single app. And that's why we call it a super app. So if we talk in, again, the Indian app storm, it's like we have our urban company and um, like Zomato, Swiggy, everything incorporated into a single app. So yeah, I think that is pretty much it. And uh, it's also cool, like they also have initiatives for people uh, see, for instance, if they are dealing with some physical disabilities, then they are uh, given lessons or you know, or, or trained that how can they be, become a part of this uh, Gojek family. So for instance, uh, there were some blind people who were taught how to give massages. So when whenever a service was required for, you know, a massage, then uh, they were dropped off by people from Gojek and they were the ones who represented a Gojek. So this is also an initiative that I actually find really cool that we're doing. Wow, wow. That, that is something I know that's, that's like amazing. Okay, so uh, why don't you tell me your experience? I mean, you have been working about almost a year now, right? It's going to be a year, so not too long. Oh, no, actually I joined this January, so it's going okay. to be around so, eight months. Eight eight months. months. Yeah, yeah. So why don't you sum up your experience with Kojek? All right, actually it's a little crazy how I got to know about Kojek. It was uh, one year before I joined, I was attending a conference, the Your Story uh, conference. And uh, there uh, there was a small stall by Gojek and I was like really intrigued by the design and when I actually got to know about the product. So I thought, okay, someday I'll try to get into this company. It was like a huge deal for me. Like, okay. And I got to interact with the people. I was like, okay, wow, these people are so amazing and the way they are interacting, it's so much fun. And I got the cool t-shirt which said it's a super app. So I think I forgot about it after a couple of months. And then I saw an ad in the movie theater. Like I was just watching movies. So it again popped up in my head. And this time I thought I'll do something about it. So I applied. And uh, at that time I wasn't looking for a switch. But I still like, you know, just for fun, I just applied. And uh, I did not get an, any response at that time. And uh, when I switched, uh, after that also, I did not think of again applying and like, you know, actually getting a response. I just thought, okay, it's something where I might not get a response from. So after a while, there was a hackathon by Gojek. It was a women-centric hackathon. It was called She Hack. 
so uh, like it was focusing on uh, women participants and it was a 24 hour uh, hackathon and i uh, like i remember i was so excited i just uh, signed up as soon as i saw that and uh, on the day of the hackathon i think uh, that was the day when uh, bangalore was all shut due to some reasons um, so at, at that day i was like reconsidering going to that hackathon but i thought I, i'm up so i'll just go anyway and i remember we were all the, there at the hackathon and i think i was the only one who had just one member in the team everybody came with a team and i had this feeling that okay maybe i should have gotten someone in my team and uh, the 24 hours went by i interacted with some people who were working there who were the mentors and um, i got to know a little about the culture and i was actually at the office so i got to see around how the office looks and i found it pretty cool like it does does not look like your standard corporate offices so after a while uh, i um, i think it was the end of the hackathon i was just pitching my uh, like my idea and uh, my current manager was one of the judges and uh, he actually reached out to me after the hackathon like i ended up getting the second prize like that was also crazy and then my current manager approaching me for a job opportunity so that was like an added added uh, you know excitement for the day so i did apply got got an interview this way and uh, i became a part of the ux engineering team then this is how i actually got it mm. and um, i think so far it has been really good like the work work culture people uh, how they communicate the office itself is so amazing like i haven't seen a culture like this before like i know i don't have a lot of experience at work yet but uh, still like um, the places i have worked at before i haven't seen a culture like this yet so i'm finding it pretty cool Yeah, and I was checking this video that's up by Kojak only on YouTube, and I, I was seeing like how you guys have these like, telephone booths, like every meeting rooms, and it's so cool and well decorated. And there's this uh, green scooter, if I'm not wrong, at some floor. The, I think that yeah. Kojak started with 20 scooters. I was going through the backstory, so that's how they started 20 scooters, and then they started the ride hailing service, and then they expanded to all these other things. But the scooter is still there. It's a green car <laughs> scooter. <Yeah. laughs> it just symbolizes the start of gojek yeah <laughs> okay so the next thing that i am really interested to ask is how do you think your coding background fit in while not just getting into gojek but you know in the, in the general trend of uh, cracking interviews by these by these tech companies so how do you think when do you think coding should come in the picture when do you think is an ideal time to start and yeah um i think uh, whenever you are interested you should start like it's not like that uh, there's a particular time or you're ever late to start even if you're like in the middle of your career and you feel like that okay you want to get into this you can just start it right away but uh, if ideally if i'm talking about students especially then i think it's good to start in your first year to at least get the basic knowledge and uh, one main question that i'm usually asked is that uh, what kind of uh, language a person should get into or you know what should they be practicing should they get into dss more is that even required later on what i feel is that uh, it doesn't matter which language you pick up you should know the basics very well like you should know the basics of the loops or the syntax like the syntax actually doesn't matter that much like how that thing is uh, making sense in a program like what is the purpose of that thing in the program so when you get to know these things and even when you get into your dss doesn't matter which language but if you understand the logic behind that dsa like that entire data structure and the way that algorithm is written if you understand that i think it helps you a lot in the longer run because uh, for instance when i i actually joined gojek i had to switch from java to kotlin so it had a little bit of a syntax change and even when i started android i started with java but i used to code in c++ so i had to switch from c++ to java but since my basics were clear my uh, you know logical reasoning was clear why uh, a thing actually made sense in the code it was really easy for me to pick up so i think if you just stick to one language and you try to just you know um, understand only that language or maybe learn that language without understanding the basics much you get stuck a little later when you have to eventually switch because you can't be coding in that one language forever as you explore your career you have to explore more languages you have to explore more uh, platforms so this is what i feel is my take on like understanding languages and starting with it makes sense 
and uh, so one more thing as long as we're speaking about coding so uh, in in most of the interviews you are asked questions based on competitive coding and why so there is a gap between competitive coding and enterprise coding right once you get in the coding structure is pretty different and the framework is different and uh, so like how do you why do you think that companies focus a lot on coding so i have also thought about it and like as close as i can come to it i feel the companies are just trying to understand your problem solving abilities and that is best portrayed in competitive coding so i mean competitive coding is nothing but your understanding of like you said data structures and algorithms so once you know that you can pick up any framework and you can translate to enterprise coding so what are your thoughts on that do you think that's that's why they do it so uh, one thing is that most of the companies focus on uh, your coding is that uh, they want to understand as you said that they want to understand your understanding of languages mm -hmm. so again the case if you like learning one language you might get the interview but it might uh, you know uh, you might have to face problems in the longer run so i think uh, the main reason why companies focus on a language uh, you know on a co competitive coding uh, platform kind of a thing because uh, they want to see how easy for it is for you to grab a language and to code in it and secondly usually an enterprise coding is that there is a code base and everybody is like contributing to it like it's similar to how your open source experience is mm -hmm. so um, it's obviously a little difficult to create that same environment in you know when you're conducting something like this for thousands of students so i and obviously if even if you like give a common repo to work on everybody will not have the same level of issues to work on or same level of problems or questions to work on so to maintain that level or to give a you know a little a fairness to the competition i think this concept of competitive coding has come up it is like the quickest way to check your understanding this gives you a couple of hours gives you a couple of questions you have to solve them and it just shows that how much you understand the code and another thing when it's very important like if you have a good understanding you'll write the code more efficiently like it will work more efficiently you'll write more optimized code so that is also you know some companies really check that also like how you have written like for instance like a very lame in a very lame language if you have to just print all the numbers how are you printing it are you using a loop or are you just printing one printing two printing three so right. that is also one yeah it makes sense it makes sense good so i think yeah that covers most of the coding aspect and from an interview perspective so let's move on to the next bit that is compensation so how do you think what is the ballpark range of a uh, entry level you know fresher graduate in gojek um all right so it's i i'd say it's a little uh, um it's a little better than uh, some companies like uh, some it companies offer uh, like if you look in the market the standard uh, um standard compensation is at about 8 to 15 Right. so it's a little on the plus side and apart from that we're just giving some benefits uh, you know some uh, incentives like our wifi and our health uh, related things are all covered so those are also nice and plus for our learning also we're given some incentives like if you want to learn some like you know learn some new languages or you want some online courses or you're ordering some books so all that is also all it covered so right. i think it's I a little better um, up, i think uh, i mean gojek is one of the few startups that has as many perks on top of the compensation as like only fan companies or probably cisco and all these big tech companies offer and the, the gojek is one of the very few startups that has so many added perks like, like you said like library and all these things gym membership so that that that's super cool so uh, why don't you define your job role for someone who's not in tech like so what exactly does a product engineer do from a from more of a business side of you so that everybody else can understand not just the technical aspect of it so sure. so basically there are multiple teams in paid our product so i am a part of the ux engineering team and uh, the ux engineering team ensures that uh, whatever uh, like we are trying to close the gap between the designers and the developers so our role is to uh, come up with tools and libraries and design uh, you know design components and stuff so that uh, whatever is being designed is being developed 
uh, like is being uh, you know implemented by developers as it is and uh, especially when uh, you look in certain uh, products of a particular company you will see there's a consistency between the products like how they have their patterns or the interactions across the products so that is also one thing that uh, our team specifically looks at we have our own design system and we ensure that okay we are giving the same experience to all our products we design the components we develop those components and the team who are actually just making the product they have to add that library and they don't have to work specifically on the components they can just work on the overall design and the framework behind it so this is what my team is doing personally and as a product engineer it's mainly our role to make sure that our product is actually you know working fine and uh, it looks good works uh, perfectly with the designs and it's not actually breaking for any of the devices or any stuff like that is what i feel in the ux engineering team specifically i think yeah we are done i think there's one last question that i would really ask, uh, like to ask that is do you think that i mean in in the development side mostly in the uh, computer engineering because i mean we have both worked in the mo for most of our career we have worked in the it field so we can only speak for that so do you think there's a deficit of women and how do you think companies are you know coming forward to provide platforms especially for women how do you think companies are working towards closing that gap yeah so i i personally feel that there is definitely a deficit so like back in college i was a representative for women makers so i was a lead for a couple of for a year and i was a member for a couple of years and i realized that uh, you know uh, usually these factors that are put up in our like the society uh, pressures and factors that we are brought up with like uh, you know uh, how guys are like a little more uh, capable of doing more things so this thing that is taught to us uh, from the beginning like right. it takes its toll on other stuff as well so like even if it comes to technology it has nothing to do with your physical abilities or anything like that or it has nothing to do with how much you're allowed to go outside and stuff but uh, because everybody is like you know uh, coming out of different environments and different parts of the world of the societies i think uh, in most of the parts it do happen a lot that uh, women are also like they they have this inferiority complex at times is what i have personally noticed so this is something that i've been trying to like on a personal level i've been trying to close this gap for people like uh, by you know uh, trying to have some workshops or talks and trying to interact with all those people like currently i also became a member for uh, like of a uh, girl script girl script panglor and women who code so all these communities they focus a lot on uh, women in tech and uh, talking about companies how they are doing it like uh, like i think it was uh, after uh, like all these communities they started uh, raising their voices that companies realized that they really had to close the uh, gap like the difference that they had in the ratio so um, there are many um, drives which are specially for uh, women employment and uh, there are competitions or hackathons like the one that i participated in so there are some some hackathons and competitions and even uh, challenges that uh, take place on uh, platforms like hacker earth which focus a lot on women uh, employment like that women are given that chance and that opportunity so this is one way that i think that they are trying to do all this apart from that there are some companies who also have their you know early early um courses kind of a thing where uh, people can just uh, especially women they can just uh, try to understand the uh, concepts that are being practiced in the company and they can just learn it uh, way uh, ahead of being actually becoming a member in the company so these are some things like some uh, ways i've seen companies doing it i've seen managers trying to focus on maintaining that uh, level you know the ratio in their teams so if each manager is focusing on doing that in their team i think the overall ratio is already like you know obviously going to take be taken care of on its own so this is one way like one of the ways how it's done i'm pretty sure there's a lot of ways like uh, where like different um say different schemes or different uh, ways that are put up by different companies which are maybe i'm not aware of 
which i would suggest that you definitely like someone who's looking for an opportunity goes out and tries to google how that their company or whatever company they are aspiring to get become a part of is trying to run a program like this or not i think this will definitely help so that is it yeah but um, i really feel like you know it needs to be done on a very uh, earlier stage as well like the companies are now trying to close the gap but this needs to be done at a very early stage within the families in the society itself right right yeah, yeah that that makes sense so i think that covers everything that i mean thank you so much for your time and thank you for explaining it so well most of the aspects uh yeah so thank i mean so thanks much. a lot thanks a lot for all the insights yeah feel is really happy i could you know become a part of this like i know you've been thinking about this for a very long time it must yeah. mean a lot to you all right thank okay. you thank you take care okay let me know if you need my help or anything else okay sure sure absolutely